Our speaker for this session is no other than Professor Lazel M. Magtoto. Uh, interesting trivia, Prof. Magtoto will be our 22nd speaker for uh, this year's uh, Eminish Biodiversity Seminar Series, but she will be the first one hailing from and talking on a subject related to uh, Northern Luzon. Ma'am Lizelle is currently an assistant professor at the Department of Biology, College of Science at the University of the Philippines, Baguio. Her research interests include uh, plant taxonomy and anatomy, biodiversity, bryology, and pteridology. Among the plants uh, she has co-described as new to science are two amorphophallus and one begonia species. She took her BS Biology degree at UP and got her Master's in Biological Sciences from St. Louis University in Baguio City. She is now taking up her uh, PhD studies in Botany at UP Los Baños, working on the taxonomy of Ardisia primulacea in Greater Luzon, Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Professor Lizelle M. Magdoto. Well, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, before I start, po, salamat po Sir Floor and sa um, uh, Museum of Natural Re um, History ng UPLB for inviting me to join this webinar. Okay, so may I share na po my screen? Yes po. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. So as Sir Floor mentioned kanina, I will be talking about um, something from the north, northern part of Luzon, um, northern part of Luzon, northern part of the Philippines. So at the uh, tip most part of the country. So I will be talking about the floristic diversity of um, Adams Ilocos Norte, specifically at um, ecotourism sites in that small municipality. So to begin, um, I would like to introduce um, Adams to every one of you because um, not all of us usually go to the up north of the Philippines. So as you can see here, it's at the very most tip of northern Luzon. So it's actually connected to the mount, um, it's the northern tip of the Cordillera mountain ranges. And it's a small municipality consisting only of around 1,700 um, Nakatao, and it's a one barangay municipality. It's Barangay Adams Municipality of Adams. But um, they have this resolution asking for the division of that Barangay Adams into um, several barangays. So Adams, before you go to Adams, when you... Um, when, when you go up north, usually we make a stop from Manila or from southern part of the Philippines, we make a stop at Vigan City. So Vigan is um, where the most famous um, Spanish colonial heritage um, houses are. So we have here the Calle Crisologo in Vigan City. And of course, when you go up north, you will also look for something that's a delicacy in the north. And that's where we find empanada in Batak City. So empanada is also one of the delicacies of vegan. However, somehow medyo magkaiba sila sa ingredients. Like for example, um, this one has mongo sprouts and papaya, shredded papaya in it, whereas Dun sa empanada in vegan, it has shredded cabbage um, instead of shredded papaya. And again, um, going up north, you also have Pawai. So just a few minutes from Batak, you have Pawai. Pawai is very um, popular um, because that's where the northern Malacan, Malacanang of the north is. And we also have the Adam, I sorry, the Pawai Lake, the Pawai Church. But one of the um, the emerging attractions of Pawai are their sand dunes. So after sand dunes of Pawai, we move to um, the lighthouse of Burgos. So that's Cape Bohidor of Burgos. 
And Burgos is also known as um, a windmill municipality. It has also solar um, panels, a, lo a large solar panel that supplies um, energy to its community. And the windmill is also extended to the municipality of Bangui. So yun yun naman yung main attraction sa Bangui. But as you move up north, papunta naman sa Pagudpod, Pagudpod is claimed to be the paradise of the northern Philippines. So famous naman dito ang kanilang beach, the White Beach of Saud, for example, and their hotels. Now, from Pagutpod, usually, um, mga tourists bumabalik na ng Manila or bumabalik na ng South. And uh, that is because wala na silang alam na mapupuntahan after Pagutpod. Parang yun na yung dead end ng mga uh, ng tourist attractions. But actually, in the late, um, in, in let's say, uh, mid month na sa 2013 14 15 medyo nagbo-boom na yung tourism near um the border of Ilocos Norte so ituloy-tuloy lang from Pagudpod so from Pagudpod um you pass by the Patapat um viaduct so this is one of the famous also um, structures in Ilocos Norte so the Patapat Viaduct. After the Patapat Viaduct, you will pass on a small um, paraiso ni Anton, as they call. And that's where Begonia Hernandoides are abundant. Um, Rufipila also, Begonia Rufipila are abundant in that site. But after Pagudpod, or after this viaduct, few minutes after this viaduct, you will find, um, sorry, you will find a junction with um not uh, not, not completed na, na na road mostly rough road pa lang siya when we went there so it's um a 13.5 kilometer na rough road so you have to endure the bump the bumps and minsan may lakad pa yan you have to go down your vehicle and walk and after 13.5 um, kilometers, then you will reach the town of Adams. Okay, so that's uh, the municipality, uh, municipal hall of Adams. Now, what is interesting in Adams? So they have actually a diverse, <coughs> sorry, ecosystem. And uh, one of their um, primary attractions are their waterfalls. So they have 18, 18 waterfalls, and uh, most of this are not yet open to public or to tourists. Let's say mga, siguro mga lima pa lang yung open for um, tourists um, for, for, for visitations. So in this um, seminar, I'll be sharing with you um, some of the flora that we documented in this site. So this is the municipality or this is the community of Adams. So maliit lang siya. The municipal hall is there. The um, public schools are here. Primary and secondary schools are here. And then you have the community, the churches. Um, dito na lahat na kumpula na dyan. And <clears throat> So we have here a very intact uh, forest. So some of the areas um, beyond this image, actually right here and down here, we have um, wildlife sanctuaries declared by, um, and, uh, declared by DNR. So there are wildlife sanctuaries, two wildlife sanctuaries here. And outside the sanctuary, we have open areas for um areas for for tourists who would like to do some hiking biking and swimming na rin sa kanilang mga waterfalls and rivers so we did some assessment here in anuplig in wayan and lovers peak so from community to anuplig that's approximately two kilometers hike and from community to inawayan that's approximately one kilometer hike and this is approximately 100 meters height. Medyo malapit lang siya. Okay, so 
The Anuclic Falls is one of the uh, biggest falls in Adams. So this is the most visited falls so far. And before reaching this one, you have to endure this almost one um, kilometer, i sorry, 100 meters, I should say. This is a 100 meters hanging bridge. And uh, sa umpisa pa lang yun, sa start pa lang ng hike, um, dadaanan mo na itong 100 meter na hanging bridge na yan. And marami ka pang dadaanan na small hanging bridges as you go um, to the interior of the forest. So my mga old hanging bridges. This is where um, people from Apayao, parts of Kalanasan, um, pass through when they go to Adams for medical needs or for, um, for their groceries down to Pagudpod or Panshan. So they have to pass through this um, trail from Kalanasan by foot, walang da dumadaan na sakyan, hindi rin pwede ang, ang mga motor, single motor, hindi rin pwede. Okay, so, as you go to Anuplig, uh, Anu you would be able to observe the very intact, um, contiguous um, forest, intact cover ng forest, and may mga trails lang mga foot trails lang papunta doon sa Anuplik Falls. So pagkatapos ng dalawang kilometrong lakad, you would be able to enjoy the view plus if you're um, fond of um, diving, swimming, then it's really a good spot in Adams. Other than Anuplik, it's the same for at the other waterfalls. Like for example, in Hawaiian, you still have to endure the um, medyo nakakahilong effect ng mga hanging bridges. So a lot of them. And uh, medyo mas open yung dadaanan to in Hawaiian because there are farms na um, converted, na converted part of the forest, ginawang mga um, uma or communal farms. And inside Inuayan forest, um, it's like a fern gully where there is an abundance of fern, three to, three to five in general, so um, fern and fern allies. And then there is this um, waterfalls inside, so Inuayan falls din siya. However, hindi siya ganun um, kalaki and like anuplig and it's not good for swimming or diving. And another area with which we assessed or visited is the Lover's Pit. So this uh, is where um, tourists go at, like, for example, four, between 4 to 5 a.m. just to watch um, the breaking of the sun. And yeah, pwede mo siyang abangan with all the mists sa labas, malamig yung environment. So this was a picture taken by um, taken by me, of course, in no, 2013. But when we went back in 2017, um, the vegetation became thinner. So mas um, medyo grassland na siya when we went there in 2013. Back in 2017, mas nawalan na ng mga um, small shrubs. So generally, um, I have here some compilations of pictures that I want to share para lang ma-appreciate ninyo yung floristic diversity ng Adams. So we have here a Fraisinetia. Um, tentatively, tentatively, I, I identify this as uh, Fraisinetia multiflora. However, it, it's, um, it's not yet confirmed. And then we have the gas, um, Gastrolia Jovanica, it's an orchid. And interestingly, we have this Eusin, um, Eusin plant, the phytocrine macrophylla, member of the family Cassinaceae. So it's a big liana. It's a big liana that um, bears this banana-like fruits na, na kumpul -kumpul, and it's um, full of trichomes. 
mabuhok siya. So, medyo makati siyang hawakan. And it's, um, it's a plant, it's a primitive plant that um the fell or they, they emerged during or they were abundant during a using epoch and then we have aglaya species of the meliaceae um this is an orchid which we asked um the local guide to um grow it for us because when we um when we um, check the area. There was no flowers yet, but when it bloomed, it um, turned out it's a Rubicatia uh, pantherina. Now this orchid, um, at its second bloom, I noticed na meron pa siyang possible siyang magbranch. And like uh, other orchids, na diretso lang siya. This one nagbabranch siya, so mas dumadami yung bulaklak niya. And then we also have other orchids, the Calathe species. Um, the Aeskin, um, we also have a Jesnoriad, Aeskinanthus, nasa mga fallen logs lang ito. And then we have an Argostema, a Ruby C, which clings at the rocks, um, sa surfaces lang siya ng rocks malapit sa mga waterfalls, specifically sa Anuplig Falls. And we have Polya thersiflora, a comelinaceae, and then um, another orchid, Plocoglotis um, plicata, and an aroid, an aglonema species. So the time that we visited the area, there was no flowers, na it's fruiting in fructescence lang nandun, so we were not able to identify it um, to species level. And then we also have Calamus species. Um, there were a lot of Calamus in, in, in the area. Matitinig ka every now and then kapag ka kumakapit ka sa mga nasa gilid-gilid ng trail. And then Bumeria heterophylla, one of the um, urticaceae na, na nasa trail. And then another Arubiaceae here, we have Alasianthus, Lasianthus atenuatus. And uh, another ruby is spermacose um, species, and a zingiberaceae plagiostachis species. Now, it is also in these areas that we found um, this species of Amorphophallus. So it was um, about seven feet tall. The first time we saw it, about seven feet tall, sha. So we immediately had um, a, a, a clue that it's one of the undescribed species of Amorphophallus. So we um, we patiently documented every detail of this plant and um, described it as Amorphophallus adamsensi. So this is the male part, the female part. The appendix, um, base of the appendix, and we have here the inner part of the base, of oh, um, the base of the limb. And also in um, in those parts, specifically near waterfalls, we um, also discovered this begonia. It's um, closely allied to Begonia hernandoides, but its leaves are um, much bigger, plus it has um, indumentum at the inner or at the um, abacial surface of the leaves, which is not present in hernandoides. So um, the first time we, um, we encountered this plant, there was no female part, so we left, um, we just um, left it in the wild. And then um, after several visits um, with our students, so we um, we usually bring our students to the same sites and um, do some photo documentations, looking at the spot characters of the plants for easy identifying their families. And um, if they can possibly identify the genus using spot characters and their photos, then that would be good. So after um, after visiting it like um, 
the first time we saw this was 2013 and then the female part was documented um 2016 so that's when we were able to confirm that it's a new species and wrote it as or described it as begonia damsensis. So I, um, we usually name it after the locality um, that is also to promote their biodiversity, their local biodiversity. And after knowing um, these publications, the locals were very happy that um, somehow they have this plant that uh, represents Adams. That's uh, yung kanilang comment. Okay, so um, these are some of the plants we were able to document in Anuplig, Inuayan, and Lover's Peak. Most of them are um, within the family of Powasii, Cyparaceae, and Araceae. So in, um, also included in Araceae are uh, Alocasia, um, Heterophylla, Alocasia species. Um, there are also Colocasia in the areas, Homolonema in the area, so a lot of them. And also a lot of Cyperaceae, they look like the grasses, but after looking at the stem, confirm mo naman na it's a Cyperus or um, member of the Cyperaceae. So we were also um, able to document some of the ferns. <clears throat> so we have here um, Blacknum agregium, previously Blacknum agregium, but now renamed as Oceanopteris agregia. And uh, based on um, the assessment of threatened plants of the Philippines um, under Dow 2017-11, um, this is considered a vulnerable species. So it's um, at the lower limit of the threatened categories. And then we have the Ceratopteris thalictroides. It's a water fern. Um, it's living um, just um, in the perimeter of isang pond. And this is also assessed as endangered according or based on the Dow 2017-11. Um, this is Chingia ferox. So identifying ferns um, is a little hard if you are not able to document um, the sorai. So for example, for Chingia ferox, you have to note um, the number of pairs ng sorai na, um, na hindi nagmagkadikit dito. And um, on the third pair, usually nag didikit na yung pares ng sorai niya. Plus, you have to look also for the in, um, the indumentum or the body coverings. So this is Chingia ferox, also a vulnerable species. And then we have um, an Osmunda CE, Planasium banksifolium. Osmunda banksifolium date, pero it's also renamed as Planasium banksifolium. This was found also on... Um, rock surfaces, malapit sa mga rivers. And then we have Tectaria somnucarpa. So, um, meron, ito yung kanyang fertile structure. And it's also categorized as endangered. So, by the way, Planasium banksifolium is other threatened species ang category niya. Okay. And... In the in our accommodation, we were able to notice two hanging platysarium, and both are um, platysarium coronarium. So the other platysarium, kasi na possible possibly na sa area is platysarium grande. So the locals um, mentioned that these plants hanging on the place where we stayed actually came from high mountains of um, Adams. So, dinala lang dito for aesthetic value. So, kinawa siyang ornamental plant. So, as you can see, the, um, the, the fronds are 
in equila uh, and the fronts are not equal in length. Kaya siya coronarium. If it's equal, then it's grande. This is a critically endangered species of platycerium. Sadly, when we went back, magisa na lang yung platycerium na nandon because somebody, not a local, asked for the other one in Winya. Okay, and then we have Angiopteris evecta or the giant fern, which is very abundant from um, the first sitio of Adams sa entrance pa lang, nakikita mo na yung mga anjopteris sa mga um, road signs. And they grow even more, they grow larger inside um, in Hawaiian forests. Ang dami nila doon. Hindi masyadong marami ang sayasaya. Parang wala akong na-document na sayasaya in the area or tree ferns. Puro anjopteris yung nandun. So anjopteris Palmiformis or Angiopteris evecta is also listed as other threatened species. So trivia for um, Angiopteris, um, they, the, the base of the petiole are actually, um, this one, the base of the plant is actually, um, it, it serves as a water storage and dyan um, umiinom yung mga wild boar according to locals. Okay, and other ferns, we have Diplashum cordifolium, Ligodium circinatum. There are also Ligodium, um, two other Ligodium species in the area. And then we have Dicranopteris linearis of the family Glycaniaceae. And we have Odontosauria retusa of Lensiaceae. And uh, there are also other... There's also another Odontosauria in um, Chinensis, especially going to Lover's Peak, madaming mga Odontosauria Chinensis doon. And then we have Pleocnemia irregularis. According to one of the locals, they also eat the young frond, this one, of Pleocnemia irregularis. Okay, now for the pteridophytes of Adams, um, we were able to document 21 families, 32 genera, and 44 species of um, a combination of um, the ferns and the fern allies. So relatively, it's a diverse one compared to other mountains na konti lang talaga na document ng mga fern species. So we had this one site in Ilocos Sur, and Ilocos Sur is... Um, little dry, drier siya compared to Ilocos Norte. And there were only like Godium circinatum, a few asplenium na, na document doon sa area. So the diversity of um, foreign and foreign allies in the area is all, um, probably attributed also to the soil type, the climate, and topography of the area. There are three soil types, uh, th three dominant soil types in the area, the undifferentiated, the oligocene, um, eocene um, soil type, and we have the um, pleistocene soil type. So now the biodiversity of the area is not only attributed to the intact forest of Adams. It's not inclusively, I mean, exclusively product of the pristine natural processes, but according to kosher is made, it's also, um, it's also product of human activities. Now featured in the, or I included in this um, slide is a young rambutan fruit because in Adams, some of the locals are given stewardship of um, some forest but, um, land for them to grow their fruit trees. So, binibigyan sila ng mga seedlings of fruit trees and um, yun yung kanilang pang supplement for their economic, um, economic um, requirements. Now, the biodiversity of Adams 
um, is enhanced by locals through planting or cultivating some of the um, crops that are not present in their locality. For example, the Plasio mesculentum is one of the native um, ferns in the area and it's one of the uh, most, um, the most um, approved delicacy also or dish in, in Adams. But they also learned to plant naren some other vegetables like pechay, cabbage, beans, um, carrots, beets, especially when they started to um, learn um, the winery, um, the craft of making wines, fruit wines, especially from seasonal fruits. So depend on the season, they make um, bugnay, they make rosel wine, duhat wine, dragon fruit wine, guava wine, and tapay. So they grow this um, plants for economic purposes para dito sa mga wine nila. Okay. And they also introduced organic farming in the area. So nagkaroon na ng mga strawberries, dragon fruits, and other vegetables. So even um, mga spices, marami na rin silang ginagrow. And this led to more forest clearing. And forest clearing would mean more, more soil erosion. And one of the um, one of the worst um, effect of this conversions land conversions would be the fragmentation of habitats. As you can see here, um, the first time we went in Adams, we walked through this path, there were no houses, there were no farms, but now, meron itong um, farm na ito, surrounded by um, vegetables and other fruits in a gonna grow. Tapos, if you observe, fragmented na rin siya. Meron ka nang nahiwalay na patch dito. Meron ka nang nahiwalay na patch dito. Meron kang, um, meron kang remaining green patch dito, remaining green patch doon. But how is it going to be connected with the intact forest? Now, this somehow affects other organisms in the area, like for example, the bats, um, the owls, the rats, the rodents, kasi maraming mga rodents doon. So it affects their uh, mobilization. And that may limit yung kanilang um, area where they can find food, where they can reproduce. Eventually, pwedeng mag karoon ng decrease in biodiversity. So, nag-increase nang nag increase yung mga farms. Luckily, meron mga tribal groups dito, may mga elders that somehow um, regulate yung conversion ng mga lands, especially that most of these are ancestral lands. So meron ditong Yapayao, is nag Yapayao um, tribal leaders group that regulates um, the use of their lands. Pero yun nga, if um, private owners continue to improve their lands by um, introducing um, other species, possible din na mawawala yung mga um, small species na, I mean, uh, the, the, the underbrush na nakikita natin. Pwede ang preserve lang nila are the trees kasi yun yung may economic value. Pero yung mga um, underbrush, katulad ng mga pinakita ko kanina, which are usually neglected when they um, they they um, 
they, when they prioritize alin ba ang isa-save nila, alin ang conserve nila, alin ang um, itatapon nila, less prioritize yung mga plants na nasa ilalim ng forest. And um, the importance of this underbrush are actually kinokondition din nila yung fertility ng soil and uh, they also provide seeds for the small mammals or small organisms na nasa forest floor. So hindi sila dapat baliwalain. So we learned um the we learned the um we learned na hindi ganun ka importante sa kanila yung mga underbrush na to or mga understory plants na to when we conducted the community validation. So um when we asked for their local um for the local names or the vernacular names of the plants they simply um answer as root root which means weeds makalat lang so dun pa lang alam mo nang hindi importante sa kanila yung mga ganung halaman okay and Well, next time that you visit um, the north, ayun, isa sa mga um, isa sa mga threat then is yung pagdami ng tourists dito sa area. Um, Siyempre, they will increase their manufacture of crops. They will increase the manufacture of their buiboy or walis. They will increase um, production of their wine. And that will lead to more and more habitat fragmentation like this. Magkakaroon ka na ng fragmented landscape. And also, um, some of the intact forests are, are, are converted into um, biking areas, hiking areas. So, hindi na ganun ka, um, I mean, not nadidisturb na yung mga um, inner part of the forest. So okay lang if they will um tourists are aware of the conservation of the area, the natural resources that are present in the area. Pero like other tourists kasi they simply throw their garbage sa kung saan-saan especially doon sa ano plig medyo malaki nga siya so the last time we visited there were two sacks of garbage na matiyagang pinulot ng mga local guides so kalat lahat yun ng mga turista especially now that the road is somehow completed so parang cemented na from from junction in Panshan Pagudpod to municipality of Adams mismo um cemented na yung 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 daan so faster na or easier na yung transportation so anyone can um access the area balikan they can well dumadami ng dumadami yung trash if um tourists are not aware of um conserving the um biodiversity of the area or keeping it clean okay so With that, I would like to thank um, everyone for, for, for sharing with me your time para mabisita ang Ilocos. But before we end this presentation, I would like to emphasize what um, um, Kosher mentioned in, in, in the article, um, utilitarian and aesthetic values of resources contribute to people's appreciation of biodiversity and thus must be seen as intrinsically interwoven and dependent on each other. Kung minsan kasi tinitindan lang natin, yung iba is the utilitarian value of these resources. Yung iba naman, aesthetic value lang nitong mga resources. But people actually enhance these resources when they, um, when they learn to appreciate yung gamit nito at yung um, beauty or yung um, aesthetic value nila. So doon lang nila pinapangalagaan yung natural resources. But if there's no use and it's not even an ornamental plant, 
then dinidisregard lang siya. Okay? So, with that, parang ang manapopromote ngayon na napipreserve lang are those with utilitarian and aesthetic value. What about the others? Meron silang ecological values. So, hindi lang siya economic values. May mga ecological values yung ibang halaman. Hindi man natin siya nagagamit as ulam. Hindi man natin siya na ipagmamalaki as an ornamental plant. Meron silang mga ecological values. Probably, they, can, um, they are food to other animals. They are um, conditioners of the soil, like for example, Dicranopteris linearis. It will take um, years, decades for them to um, condition the soil para maging, um, maging suitable siya for trees to grow or for seedlings to grow. Okay, and also I'd like to uh, acknowledge um, FPE. FPE was um, was the reason why uh, was the reason for us to to conduct preliminary studies in the area, and then with also the help of UP Baguio, our students are brought in the area every now and then. Pinapayagan kami mag field work done, but just for the students to appreciate the diversity in the area. So the locals, especially for um, contributing to um, our knowledge of their local um, floral diversity. So yung mga gamit nila, some of them are used for medicine, some of them are used for food, some are used for um, materials for weaving. And also we have here the leader of the tribal group and um, member of the LGU. Thank you so much. Ian. Bah, thank you, ma'am uh, Lizelle, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Para na ho rin tayo nagturista sa Adams. <laughs> Matagal na po kung hindi nakakapunta sa Pagudpod. So at least kahit pa paano, malapit na malapit pala yung uh, Adams sa Pagudpod. So, uh, ilang minuto lang siya. Ilang minuto lang pala yan. Okay. So, uh, we're inviting uh, the members of our audience to ask some questions. Kay uh, Ma'am Lizelle, just put it here in the chat box. I can read it for you. Or if you want, you could ask a live question. So, okay. So, let's, um, let's start. Uh, we have some questions here already. Um, Question from Jemari and Rosario. Um, she's just asking what sampling methods uh, did you use? Siguro, uh, let us explain lang siguro na marami kayo naging projects. Um, probably you could just run through kung ano yung mga sampling methods na ginamit nyo for uh, these sampling sites. Um, for the first project, we did belt transect. Um, especially in the interior part of the forest and in the open areas. So we did belt transect also in um, yung medyo may, may mga pa slow belt transect talaga ginamit namin. But in the succeeding trips where we bring our students, um, ginagawa lang namin is opportunistic sampling, photo documentation. Kasi um, for appreciation of biodiversity lang yung ginagawa namin for our students. And um, parang, okay, uh, makikita nila yung mga spot characters. Yan. So, opportunistic sampling lang for the students and photo documentation. But for the project, we did the belt transect. Okay. So, um, question from Samuel Brillo. Um, he's planning to conduct floristic surveys after uh, his MS. Uh, he would like to ask if it's still necessary to prepare herbarium specimens for every plant documented on site. Or is photographs or photographic the documentation enough? Um, taking photographs on site are very uh, it's very useful. Like um, when I was a student, ang ginagawa lang namin dati is collect and collect. Kasi parang hinihingal ka na sa pagakyat sa kabundukan ng cordillera. 
<laughs> Tapos mag-photodocument ka pat umuulan, parang hirap. So, mm-hmm. ang ginagawa lang namin dati is to collect and collect. So, but as a student, parang nahirapan ako ng after pressing tapos drying. Hindi ko na makilala yung kulay ng flower. Hindi ko na makilala yung kulay ng kanyang stipules, ng mga bracts, ng mga indumentum. So, that's where photographs um, become useful. Mm-hmm. So, parang when um, when you have good photos, kitang-kita mo lahat yung angulo ng mga structures niya, then that is going to be a very good um, digital voucher. But I would suggest na meron pa ring herbarium sample. Kasi that's when, um, if there are structures not taken from the photos, then that's the time na pwede mong balikan ngayon yung sample mo. Um, also, you can do some um, sectioning dun sa um, herbarium sample mo if, if, you need, uh, if you need to. Kasi kung minsan, um, yung pagkakaiba ng mga species, nakikita lang din sa kanilang anatomy. So, kailangan mo pa rin, kailangan mo pa rin ng sample na pwedeng balikan other than the photos. Okay, so I think um, uh, what Ma'am Lisel is uh, saying is uh, uh, depende talaga sa sa purpose ng project mo. No? If it entails na kailangang meron kang physical voucher, ay uh, of course, kailangan mag-collect ka for your herbario. Pero uh, especially now, dahil medyo powerful na ang imaging, uh, imaging uh, equipment natin ngayon, uh, minsan, uh, yun nga, pwede na rin siguro yung, pwede na talaga din yung digital uh, voucher. Yung photograph. So, but yun nga, kailangan ma, uh, make sure that pareho mong kayang gawin. No? Yeah, hindi kayo parang uh, magre-relegate ka na lang sa one skill, sa isang skill lang, no? sa isang skill set. I think, uh, as a biologist at saka um, botanist, you have to know how to do that. Okay, so uh, that's a question from uh, Karen Ayer Moshi Archaga. Um, may I ask, what is the specific protocol used for identifying plants? Uh, are there, do you use dichotomous keys uh, when you're identifying plants? Hi Karen. Yes, um we use dichotomous keys primarily and uh, kung hindi kaya sa dichotomous key then that's a time that um we do some trial and error. Mm-hmm. So um other than trial and error, we also do image comparison if there are images available on site. I, I mean in in the website. So, di ba marami na tayong digital flora ngayon? So, in the Philippines and outside the Philippines, marami ng mga digital flora where um, we can um, browse the photos and compare it with our own specimens. So, if there are no keys available, like for example, the one that I'm um, I'm studying now, yung grupo nila wala silang updated na dichotomous key. So, yung parang dichotomous key nila is 19... 20s. 1920s pa yung available na dichotomous key. So parang yun lang yung meron. So parang ngayon, ang hirap mag-identify with all the new, uh, with all the discoveries from 1920s to now, parang ang hirap mag-identify without the help of keys. So ang ginagawa ko ngayon is trial and error, check the characteristics, compare, mga ganun. <laughs> checking the protologues and all. Yeah. Kaya siguro din uh Karen, uh important din na uh, you know, you also practice your taxonomic skills, you know, how to how to identify uh, as well as you know, try try later on contributing dun sa you know, updating the the keys themselves, no? Uh wag tayong uh makontento na lang, no? especially yung sinasabi nga ni Ma'am Lisel na mayroong mga keys na outdated na talaga and it really needs uh, updating. So siguro part din na magiging uh, work mo or research mo in the future if you want to is um, if you're conducting uh, surveys, uh, itry nyo na rin i-update yung, 
yung keys right or coordinate with your uh, with experts uh, so para ma-update ma yung keys na yun for future use din ng ibang mga researchers right ma'am Lisel yes po uh, so from uh, Vrinelli Agaton uh, ma'am Lisel did your uh, group already try conducting uh, floristic service in Mindanao um, hindi pa po. Wala pa po kaming ginagawang floristic survey sa Mindanao. But uh, their colleagues um, are somehow affiliated to some researchers in CMU, mga ganun. So may mga ginagawa na rin po sila doon. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, we have a live audio question from Michelle Alejado. Uh, Michelle? Um, hello, good morning, Ma'am Lisel. Hi, Ma'am. Apo, ang question ko po, kasi yung sa survey nyo, so very general po siya, no? You, okay. you covered everything po. So, in your next study or researches po, um, is there a specific taxa or taxon that you want to focus on? And bakit po yun yung napili nyo na group? Thank you, Ma'am. Actually po, um, yun, medyo general nga po yung ginagawa ko before. So I even do bryophytes. Hindi ko lang na-include sa akin presentation kasi um, medyo mas ma mabuting thing. I mean, mas, yeah, mas toxic ang mga bryophytes. Um, but for now, I'm focusing on um, the genus Ardisha of the family Primulaceae. So bakit itong grupo na to? We have actually... 70 plus species of Ardisha in the Philippines so far sa mga base yon sa mga literature. Now the last time na may nag-study ng Ardisha um, dito sa Pilipinas na medyo, medyo comprehensive in the sense na nakapag-publish siya ng isang subgenus of um, Ardisha in the Philippines was Stone. Pero si Stone namatay na 1990s yung kanyang publication. And uh, since then, may mga paisa-isang um, annotations sa um, PNH, sa National Herbarium natin kung ano yung mga species. Pero walang bagong collection na nakadeposit or walang bagong literature on Ardisha of the Philippines. So base sa mga old literature, I was able to um, list down 70 plus species. And uh, may mga ilan dito na na-rename na, may mga ilan na na ibaba na sa subgenus, may mga ilan na from other subgenus or other genus ay transfer na sa genus na to. Medyo problematic si R.D. siya in, in short. So, medyo challenging. <laughs> Kaya, yun. So, parang other, other plants kasi, other plants kasi, um, ang dami na rin nag-studies. And karamihan dito, very popular sa mga natrabaho ko na is begonia, amorphophallus. So, naisip kong mag, um, mag ibang grupo naman sa yung medyo hindi pa nagagalaw sa Pilipinas pero very abundant sa paligid natin. Ardisha in, 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 in this case, for example, is ang kilalang, na, ang kilalang halos na Ardisha dito sa Baguio is Cranata which is yung binibenta na money tree the common money tree. So it's not even um, it's not even native to the Philippines. So tapos um, southern part ng Luzon, doon medyo nagkaka, uh, nagiging popular si um, Aunasin, si Tagpo. Pero Halos sa 70 plus na species, sorry sabihin mo na in the Costa Digital Flora, there are less than 60 species listed. So sa ganung number ng species, ang kilala lang halos na pangalan locally or vernacularly is Tagpo at Aunasin. Mm -hmm. So nasaan yung iba? <laughs> okay, so marami pa ako yung gagawin, Ma'am Blisel pala. Okay. So before we go to the question of uh, Danica Velasco, meron lang akong isisingit na you know, personal question. Uh, Ma'am, uh, since yung Adams is bordered by Pagudpud uh, up north and then Cagayan and Apayao, uh, do you find that there are territorial disputes that you know, could present difficulties in maintaining biodiversity, especially in terms of jurisdiction. Of course, kasi minsan may mga, especially na isang barangay lang ang Adams. 
So for example, paglabas mo, ano na siya, uh, apayaw na siya. So of course, yung mga ganyan, mountainous areas, uh, yung geographical demarcation, minsan uh, blurred, di ba? So um, yun nga, in terms of you know biodiversity protection uh, and uh, you know related to political and geographic jurisdictions may mga uh, cases ba kayong nakita na there are uh, you know nakikita talaga na there are difficulties in in maintaining them yeah um isa sa mga sitios ng Adams is Bukarot mm-hmm. so kinaklaim ito ng Adams as one of its sitios and kinaklaim din siya ng kalanasan as one of their own yung Bukarot mm-hmm. so parang overlapping silang overlapping sila sa part na yon and uh, pagdating naman sa political disputes wala kami na encounter maliban sa dahil nga um, may mga wildlife um, sanctuaries na dineclare doon sa area, dalawang um, critical habitat doon. So parang yung mga locals, medyo nag sila saan sila dapat mag-hunt <laughs> ng kanilang um, panggamit, pangkain. So isa sa mga na-mention is Bukarot kasi hindi labas siya nung um, wildlife critical habitat. Pero lumapas sa usapan, parang ano lang, informal kwentuhan lang na yun nga parang paano ka pupuntang Bukarot? Eh, hindi nga sa atin yun. <laughs> so may mga ganun. So parang may times na pinagbabawalan sila doon pero kinaklaim naman nila as, as part ng kanilang municipality. Okay. So, uh, okay. let's Thank you for that, ma'am. So... Itong tanong ni Danica Velasco actually related to the earlier question but uh, she's asking have your group tried uh, doing floristic service sa Luzon especially in areas uh, near Batangas province naman so kanina ay sa Mindanao uh, now at Southern Luzon nagconduct na ho ba kayo ng surveys um actually po um yung coming yung aming project dati is um, naka-focus lang siya sa northern part of Luzon since um, naka-link po siya sa university and uh, UP Baguio is the northernmost <laughs> campus. So parang doon usually yung area namin. So parang ano lang po kasi, um, pagka naka-link sa university yung study, even yung mga fieldworks namin, medyo parang may um, internal ano ba na Um, sige, dyan na lang aralin nyo dito kami. <laughs> Since maha- malawak ang Luzon at distributed mm. naman yung mga UP campuses, so parang, okay, dito kami sa kabundukan, wala kami sa dagat, so sige, kayo naman mag-aaral sa dagat, mga ganun. But, uh, so there, parang Batangas, ang alam ko, UPLB pong marami researches dyan with uh, kasama na din, pati Quezon, Rizal, mga ganyan. Mm-hmm. Hindi naman sa turfing, no? <laughs> but, uh, Hindi naman but, sa turfing. Oh, oh, but, but I think, ano naman, um, I, I think, uh, kaya nangyayari yon siguro to clarify lang din, is because uh, when you conduct your expeditions, your studies, uh, you, uh, nagre-rely ka rin sa finances mo. Yes. So, so you so will be overextending. Proximity-wise. <laughs> you will be overextending your, your, your finances, your, yung costings mo, kung tagabagyo ka and bababa ka ng, ng, ng Batangas, no? Especially if you're going to bring everything. But, uh, it depends on the funding agency also. For example, uh, for example, kinuha ang consultant si na Ma'am Lisel uh, ng, let's say, isang company uh, uh, in Visayas and they are willing to do that and they are libre. Kung baga sila ay uh, tawag dito, ay, uh, they have time for that. I think, pwede naman gawin yun, no? So, uh, hindi naman, hindi, yun nga, hindi naman sa turfing yun. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, uh, next question from Tita Ami Luna of the College of Forestry and Natural Resources. Um, uh, have you tried uh, computing and assessing the diversity indices of the area? Yun ang tanong niya kasi uh, 
the your presentation is was more on floristic diversity so yes po um may ginawa po kami since nagbelt transact po kami doon sa isang project so we were able to compute um the um some indices kasama natin mga importance value mga ganun pero um since um idinagdag ko po dito sa presentation yung mga photo documented from our succeeding trips i am i mean the following trips ng kasama ko yung mga students mga ganun mga opportunistic um documentations so hindi ko na po isinama yung um, pinagsama-sama ko po yung species list mm -hmm. so hindi ko na sinama yung um, indices na compute namin using the belt transect since okay. may mga opportunistic sampling na rin kami ginawa i mean dinagdag dito yes Okay, thank you, Ma'am Ami, for that question. Probably you could invite Ma'am Toto, uh, Prof. Magtoto, for a uh, webinar dyan naman sa College of Forestry, Natural Resources, focusing on the diversity indices that you are um, interested in. So from John Raymond Torres, uh, meron siyang actual na uh, two long questions. So let me read this. Uh, First question, how do you effectively reconcile the economic value of other plant species, which appears to have emerging or increasing importance for some locals versus the ecological importance of the recorded species, which are mostly threatened? Okay. Um, number one, they are not aware that these species are threatened. So when we presented this list to the community, pictures, and then um, made them aware na ito ay threatened, mga ganun, that's the only time na, uh, so dito lang pala yan, so dapat pala hindi natin, ano, mga ganun na yung kanilang comments. Kasi before that, um, even our local guides offer us some orchids na iuwi namin, some uh, splenium na malalaki, mga bird's nest na malalaki, may um, token daw namin pa uwi, pero dinecline namin kasi doon. Um, Inorient namin sila or in-educate namin sila that these are threatened, that these are found only in your place, these are endemic to your place. Mga ganun, doon pa lang nila nalaman na may mga ganong kategorya ng mga halaman. Especially na um, for, for those naman na with economic values, um, isa sa mga kailangan natin sigurong i-share with the locals is yung sustainable uh, sustainable use of this um, this um, species like um, if these are really used for um, economic purposes then probably pwede siyang i-grow um, i sa backyard nila at hindi every now and then i-extract from the forest so yun po um Number one, to reconcile yung, yung gamit niya at saka yung, stat, yung conservation status niya is let them, um, let them be aware kung ano yung um, ecological or biological um, importance ng species na yun. Okay. Uh, okay. Next question, how do you recommend biodiversity conservation? If after investigation there are few threatened or endangered species, or let's say both of the species in an area are mostly introduced, so is would the recommendation be based on the number of endangered species found in the area? Um, meron po tayong uh, criteria para sa declaration ng isang lugar na maging protected siya. Um, like, the, the presence of only one endangered species would suffice, I think, para i-declare siya as protected. Or kung may key species doon, um, like, for example, yung Philippine eagle sa Apayao. So, dahil gumagala siya sa Apayao area, bandang likod ng Adams, So the uh, parang tinitingnan um dinicler yon as KBA. So malaking malaking area siya and somehow being KBA though it's not protected 
already nagkakaroon na ng biodiversity awareness yung mga tao doon. So, hindi, um, somehow, medyo mapoprotektahan na siya though hindi man siya legally um, declared as protected. Pero for the um, criteria, ang alam ko, yung presence ng endangered species, enough na po yun to justify na, ano, na, um, na maging protected siya. Pero See. kapag puro introduced yung nandun, non-endemic, I don't think it's going to be um, ano to, approved na protected. So another question from Danica. Uh, can we do herbarium, her, herbaria, or can we establish herbaria there at Ilocos for purpose, uh, personal purposes or personal research? Can can they do that, especially the students? Um, we have um, university herbaria na mga... Um, we have university at saka national herbaria sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. um, now, sa Ilocos, <clears throat> I'm not sure kung merong herbarium na established ang Northwestern University or MMSU. Ay, hindi ko po sure. Um, wala po ako na kikita sa index herbarium. Mm -hmm. Pero kung nag-start nag silang mag-establish before having it registered sa index, then baka pwede maki-collaborate with them. Um, kasi kung for personal use lang, for personal research, unless you have um, permit to collect, pwede kang mag-establish um, mag, mag siguro ng personal herbarium mo. Um, for your um, own consumption or for future cons uh, for future reference, that is uh, provided meron kang um, permit na mag-collect ng mga samples para i-press at itago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Danica, I hope it, that answers your question. Uh, uh, question from Calixto Hamandra. Good morning. Uh, what is the what is the response of the localities that you have uh, been working with after doing the biodiversity study? Uh, uh, did the LGU made possible, uh, or were did they make um, other projects, LGU LGU projects, uh, to protect uh, their biodiversity? Yes. Um, after we did this um, assessment sa kanilang mga resources, specifically ng mga biodiversity um, resources nila, um, the F, since nakalink yung project namin with FPE, so yung FPE, sila na yung nag-initiate ngayon ng um, community build, uh, parang capacity building ng community for... Mm -hmm. um, local based na projects so parang community yung magmamanage ang ang um i was the one who presented yung aming output sa isang community meeting with FPE at saka yung mga leaders tapos doon na rin sila nagkaroon ng workshop for biodiversity management conservation uh, sorry biodiversity conservation management na community based so parang yung mga local ang tin train or um, binigyan ng um, workshop para makapacitate sila to um, conserve their own biodiversity. Okay. So a question from Eleanor Alfonso. Uh, good morning. Have you tried doing uh, molecular identification versus morphological identification, um, you know, using the dichotomy key? So um, yun po yung kanyang question. Okay. Um, for the um, project, we did not use morphological um, tools para sa identification ng uh, mga species since madami siya. So, so we base it primarily sa morphology nila. And, but for the new species, um, for example, for the amorphalus, at first we did morphological uh, description. Pero may follow-up research um, yung isang thesis student namin who did a uh, molecular um, comparison with other morphalus species and confirmation siya of um, it's parang, yeah it's additional um, it's an additional description or yeah additional characteristic for the described species. Okay, so a uh, question from John David Cortez. Um, are there plans to conduct ethnobotanical studies on the species surveyed 
in the area. Do you think such studies would help reconcile or mitigate the conflicts in terms of conserving plant biodiversity and the economic, you know, economic trust or uh, of the community that is, uh, for example, uh, organic farming, winery, tourism? Mm -hmm. So, katulad nga nang nabanggit ko dun sa last slide na um, people would only appreciate biodiversity kapag ka ramdam nila yung, um, utilit um, yung utilitarian value niya at yung aesthetic value ng mga resources na yun. So, through um, ethnobotanical studies, um, pwede nating ma-enhance yung kanilang awareness dun sa value ng kanilang mga um, local biodiversity. Um, kasi, for example, may mga pahapyahopyaw kaming tinatanong sa mga locals, like um, the usual, kinakain po ba ang bunga nito? Ganyan. Um, so yung iba, aware sila kung ano yung gamit ng halaman, yung iba hindi. So parang hmm. para sa iba, patapon lang siya. Para sa iba, damo lang siya. Pero sa iba naman, especially kapag ka medyo uh, matatanda na or uh, may mga family members sila na matatanda, they are aware na itong maliit na halaman pala na to can be used as um, something para sa diarrhea, mga ganon. Yung ugat pala nito, pwede sa diarrhea, mga ganon. So by conducting ethnobotanical study, I think makakatulong yon for them to value, put va more value sa kanilang mga um, local resources. Okay. So, okay, we have a question from, thank you for that, ma'am. Um, Yolanda Angeles, um, her question is, it is always given that whenever a particular place opens up for tourism, uh, rapid, degradation, uh, rapid degradation of the of the ecology takes place. So how can we, or you as a biodiversity surveyor or researcher contribute to the conservation or protection of the place's current vegetation in exchange after uh, in exchange for collecting data that uh, we wanted from the place so yeah so um mahirap talagang um sabihan yung locals or yung mga community na they have to um stop extracting this species from the wild kasi endangered siya or threatened siya kung yun yung primary resources nila. Mm -hmm. Tapos lalo na kapag ka nandun na yung tourism and um, tourism is the, their only um, parang means para medyo umunlad economically, mahirap talaga silang bawalan. So sa, um, kung babawalan mo sila or kung, um, kung, kung babawalan mo sila, na totally babawalan, pero kung i-restrict mm -hmm. mo sila of using their own natural resources, then you should provide alternatives. So yun, yun po yung ginagawa ng um, ibang mga um, biodiversity foundations natin, um, helping locals to um, conserve their biodiversity, for um, helping them make use of their biodiversity sustainably. So parang binibigyan nila ng mga alternatives, like for example, isa sa mga nakikita namin before is, yung marami doon yung um, grass na ginagamit sa walis tambo. So, bakit hindi yun yung kanilang um, i-enhance na product? Why, uh, for example, well, nandun na yung winery nila, pero isa kasi sa mga kapalit ng winery is, um, yung kinikita nila sa winery is yung pag-convert nga ng ibang uh, forest patches into fruit trees or into dragon fruit farms. So malaki-laki rin yung area na na-convert um, sa mga dragon farm uh, dragon fruit farm. So why not um uh, why not give them the idea and the ability or the capacity na gamitin yung mismong natural resources nila for economic um, purposes. Mm -hmm. So isa pa doon is yung um, pandan yung panda na malaki yung ginagawang uh, wind weave na ginagawang banig or basket. So madami din sa area pero madalang lang ko konti lang sa kanila ang nagwi-weave. Okay. So aside from that siguro it transferred din yung you know skills for making sure to you know, to create yung biodiversity friendly enterprises, no? Right. 
So a question from uh, Carla Jane Gonzalvo. So she's concerned on what you have mentioned earlier about the visitor asking for a critically endangered species and the locals just you know, gave it to them. So uh, are there policies uh, imposed which would prevent this in the future, uh, especially in ngayon, mayroong, there's the plantito-plantita phenomenon and um, Carla is concerned on the biodiversity protection uh, you know, policies or guidelines that should be in place in those kinds of areas. So what are your thoughts on that, ma'am? Okay. Um, isa po yun sa mga medyo problem challenges na nakikita namin sa area kasi they're very generous kasi for them it's those plants are just ordinary plants kasi nagkalat lang sa paligid nila but actually there are um, in in other places wala na palang mga to or madalang palang mga to hindi sila aware na ganun um actually yung humingi dun sa halaman LGU din <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. national agency din siya eh. so oh. aware siya so yun um, siguro parang yun nga sa sobrang generous pin ng mga tao kahit ano binibigay nila basta hingin mo <laughs> so siguro uh, the LGU itself kailangan din ma-strengthen yung kanilang um, kampanya um, tungkol sa kanilang mga resources mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kasi um, yun nga parang Sana yung mga tao na these are just ordinary plants sa surroundings nila. So, bakit mo ipagdamot? Parang ganun. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, oh, especially yung mga locals. Um, you know, alam mo naman, Filipinos, they really like to please yung especially visitors. No? So, I guess um, it all boils down to you know, knowing um, even the LGUs, knowing the species that are endangered, you know, flora species that are, that are endangered at their localities. Para, you know, sila mismo, the LGU themselves, um, are aware that uh, hindi dapat pinamimigay or dinidistribute yung mga uh, flora. Okay. Uh, we have a question from May Ann Batuyong. So, uh, she would just like to ask if your group have already conducted preliminary sur surveys in Mount Pau, in the Mount Pau range of Adams. You mentioned uh, earlier the presence of indigenous peoples in the area. Uh, may may I know if there are requirements that you, you know, she's asking if you have complied uh, with the uh, requirements, what were those requirements prior to the survey and uh, the requirements of the LGU of Adams. Yeah, for the project, um, consultations with the tribal leaders, elderly, plus um, um, with the presence of NCIP, plus Merom Ding um, joint meeting with DNR mm -hmm. um, regarding this KPNP project or the Calbario Patapat Natural Park project. Um, Pagdating naman sa Mount Pau, um, we were not able to explore the area kasi um, yun nga po, medyo limited lang yung time. Parang maglilive lang ng ilang araw <laughs> para sa project. But, and going to Mount Pau, according to locals, kailangan mo mag-alat ng tatlong araw at least. Kasi kailangan mo mag-tent. <laughs> wala daw pong mga masak... Wala daw, hindi rin daw po kaya ng habal-habal. So, kailangan mo talagang mag-tent doon para makapag-explore um, ka ng konti. Mm -hmm. So, kaya hindi pa kami umakit ng pao. And, um, yun po. Um, pagdating naman sa mga student trips, we always make sure na municipal tourism officer so, na, uh, pag nagdadala kami ng mga students doon, um, they always uh, provide us with assistance then. Um, Dati-rate may nagpo-provide sila ng, ng mga ano to, um, tourism officers nila as guides namin. Mga ganun. But for the project, yes po, um, may mga um, requirements pong um, 
requirements sa NCIT at saka sa DNR na nagamit po. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess uh, dapat uh, before you conduct any activity, make sure that you fulfill yung requirements ng uh, the local agencies such as the LGU, of course, the regional and the uh, regional and the local uh, environmental and natural resources uh, office. Dapat meron kayong GP. And of course, meron kayong, if you're uh, doing that as a school requirement at university, of course, you have you have, you have to have your permits no, uh, for research. And uh, if you're dealing with areas that are uh, covered by the uh, national some NCIP, you have to get the permit from NCIP. Okay. So, um, okay, uh, we have a question again from, follow-up follow up question lang from Danica. Uh, she's asking if Adams at Ilocos Norte is a protected area or not. So, if so, how how does the LGU protect and conserve their vegetation present in? So, Adams itself is not a protected area. So, Adams, um, the, the Maligligay, the first city of Adams, Masitio Maligligay, is um, within the buffer zone of uh, the Calvario Patapat Natural um, Park. So, KPNP, hindi, um, hindi rin siya... Uh, yeah. um, may pambi na sa KPNP and yung first sitio ng Adams, maligligay, yun yung nasa buffer zone niya. Yun yung nakapasok sa buffer zone ng KPNP. Pero the rest ng Adams is labas na siya ng KPNP. Ang nasa loob ng Adams is yung dalawang critical wildlife habitat. Um, Adams AC, ACWH. So dalawang um patches yon na dineclare as wildlife critical habitat so ang ginag ang according to locals they were um restricted from um extracting resources from those two areas yung critical wildlife habitat nila so yun yung medyo na problema sila noon parang hindi raw sila ewan ko kung totoo hindi raw sila aware na gagawing critical wildlife yung kanilang uh, yung yung part ng kanilang area mm. so parang sila ngayon yung nawalan ng hunting ground so parang yun yung kanilang sentimento na ilabas sa amin ng time na yun mm-hmm. i guess when you put these uh, kinds of uh, regulations in place dapat uh, you have to take into consideration you know the the sources of uh, uh, food and um, income nung locals. No? Uh, from Ariel Larona, um, question, uh, were you able to find some species of Melastomatacea, specifically of the genus uh, Medinilla? Hi, sir, Ariel. Yes po, um, may dalawang Melastomatacea uh, may may melats tumataas yung malabastricum yung isa yung common and yung isa naman po may medinilia um, ang initial ID ko namin doon is stenobothrys so isa rin siyang endangered species it's a giant medinilia <laughs> okay uh, I hope that answers your question, Kuya Riel. Um, I posted the online evaluation form uh, again at the chat box, so please check. Uh, I think the first link na inilagay ko was uh, participants are saying that it's not available, but uh, for me, it's available. Uh, kindly check that lang siguro, no? Okay, so ano, questions, other questions? Um, Okay, uh, so please uh, let us know kung there's a problem with the link. Okay, uh, if you have uh, other questions, do let us know. Um, I have a question here, Mab. Um, uh, what do you think will happen if uh, Adams will be separated into the five barangays, uh, you know, conservation-wise? 
<laughs> Honestly, parang uh, mas mahirap. Mm-hmm. Kasi conservation-wise, uh, magkakaroon na ng kanya-kanyang um, regulations. So, we don't know kung anong priority ng isang barangay. If it's um, farming, agroforestry ba ang priority nila or hindi. So, mm-hmm. we really don't know. Pero, if um, provided, madi-divide sila into different barangays, still, if strong yung um, advocacy ng LGU nila towards biodiversity conservation or biodiversity management, then there will be no problem. I see. Okay. So, any more questions? Um, okay. Uh, how about this one? Um, ma'am, can you correlate uh, that the uh, decrease in biodiversity, especially in the flora, can you correlate it to the increasing tourism pressure from other areas? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, one of the areas na, na visit namin is Palemlem. Um, it's not, it, 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 we were not able to conduct um, listings sa Palemlem ng mga understories kasi mas nag-focus yung grupo sa trees sa Palemlem. Um, may mga signs of logging din sa trail nung time na nagmakyat kami sa Palemlem. And uh, I think Um, malakas talaga yung pressure ng tourism sa mga nangyayaring ganong activities sa forest mm-hmm. ng Adams. They may not be the ones using these resources. Maari yung mga nasa lower areas. Kasi if you go out um, from Adams, doon sa Pagudpod, paglabas mo ng Pagudpod, Pansyan, Pasalen, Pagudpod, Poblasyon, it's all resorts. So, mga hotel at mga beach resorts, lahat yun. So, it's really um, it's really possible na dahil sa booming tourism sa, uh, sa Ilocos Norte, maapektuhan at maapektuhan yung mga resources nila sa mga inner areas. Um, we also conducted some awareness, um, parang biodiversity awareness survey. And medyo... Interestingly, um, yung mga nasa malayo, mas aware sila about biodiversity conservation, biodiversity things, compared doon sa mga malapit mismo doon sa mga resources. Kaso, ang mga gumagamit talaga unsustainably, mas na yung nasa middle, tapos mm-hmm. yung nasa malayo. Yes. So I think um, I know it's a challenge for everyone there uh, the LGUs the conservation uh, sector as well as yung mga outsiders no uh, no to become more aware and appreciate yung uh, things that are available at uh, at Adams no we all know na you know the price for development and especially the price for you know having a tourism area is extraction of the local resources especially for food so importante yan lalo na uh, ang style is uh, you know you highlight your local delicacies highlight your local culture and with that you put pressure on the resources available no um, there are some uh, some areas that cannot actually support tourism because yung kanilang uh, available resources, lalo na yung flora, uh, yung kanilang food resources are actually just sufficient for subsistence no, ng mga locals doon. So I think um, uh, this information that you provide as uh, biodiversity and yung mga indices na we are also uh, interested in, I, I, I think it will be a very good... Uh, You know, uh, information for for policy making, and uh, we hope that it will be become more available para sa for the use of not only probably not only the LG of Adams, but of course the surrounding municipalities and the relevant uh, 
agencies as well. For example, yung Department of Tourism in Region Region 1 or Region 2, di ba? Malalapit lang siya. As well as the local DNR. Okay. So, uh, do you have any more questions? I think uh, there are none. But before, uh, I think we have to wrap up our, our program. Before we we close, let me just say, uh, ma'am, thank you. Uh, to Prof. Uh, Magtoto, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, we've learned a lot, especially um, um, there are things here that we, we still don't know. No? Lalo na nandito kami sa, sa Los Baños and it's, uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to learn more about the biodiversity of uh, other areas. Lalo na itong Adams in Ilocos Norte. We will be presenting uh, Prof. Magtoto with a uh, digital certificate of recognition. Let me just uh, share my screen. The Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UP Los Baños, College Laguna, is awarding this certificate of recognition to Professor Lizelle M. Magtoto for serving as our resource person during uh, this session, 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar on the floristic diversity in the ecotourism sites of Adams Ilocos Norte held on the 14th of April 2021 from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So in witness whereof, the signature of our director is here unto affixed, uh, signed by Dr. Marian P. De Leon, our director. And thank you very much, Ma'am Lizelle. Congratulations po for a good webinar. Thank you, Dean Po. Yes, Po. And so uh, make sure to uh, click on the link that was provided uh, at the chat box. If you are having problems, um, try going to bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval. And we will be accepting responses until 3 p.m. today. Do visit our website at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. You can write us via email uh, at mnh.uplb.up.edu.ph. Visit our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. Uh, look for the handle UPLB Museum. And the recording of this uh, webinar will be posted to our YouTube channel hopefully by tonight or early morning. And we will be emailing the registrants if they are already, uh, if the video is already available. Uh, visit our Wikipedia and, and, our, and our trip advisor pages. Just uh, search for UPLB Museum of Natural History. So with that, maraming salamat po. And to all our audiences, uh, do check our Facebook page for announcements of our next biodiversity seminar. Um, probably it would be next Wednesday. So with that, maraming salamat. Ma'am Lizelle, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Sir, salamat po. Thank you po.